Hey YouTube, what up? It's your girl Jimmy Pink. What up to my T-Birds and my Pink Ladies. And welcome to the review of All Stars 2 Reunited. Listen, we got a lot to get through because the shade was thick in this bitch, okay? So we got a lot to get through, so let's just get to it. First and foremost, let's knock the link out. Boom! I always put it on the wrong fucking side. Anyway, day 27. Forgot I already took that down. Day 27 of the Hunt for Pink October, where I wear pink every day and do a video from October 1st to October 31st to raise money and awareness for breast cancer. We got the link out the way. Let's get into this drag race shit. Let's get up in this gig, baby. Because it's a lot. First of all, I mean, I look, my, my notes is all out of fucking order. I'm going to say this. Because there's some stuff in my notes I'm going to skip because I found myself repeating myself. And I'm going to say this. The show started, ended, and was sprinkled throughout with Diggs and Fifi O'Hare. They was dragging her to fucking hell. Do you understand what I'm saying? They were dragging her the house down boots. Throwing her under buses. She was getting drugged in two different directions by horses. Like, they was dragging her ass. Drag, dra this was Fifi's drag race because they was dragging her ass as much as they fucking could. At first, I was just like, ooh, the library is open. And then after a while, it started being like, all right, Rue, you got an Emmy. You being a little bit petty now. You doing a little bit too much. All them continuous digs and beepy. It started out as like delicious little mm -hmm. tidbits. I couldn't get enough of it. I was like, oh yeah, give me another one. Rude. That was mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that shit was so tasty to the point of it was like, damn, we having this again. Like I'm tired of fucking leftovers. Like that's what it was. Okay, so getting past that though, but. It was delicious, and then it, it sour for a point. Um, and before I get into anything else, I want to say it dominated a lot of the show. And I think there are some things and some people, especially Katya, that we might have wanted to hear from a lot more. But y'all was too busy finding every opportunity to fucking dig at Fifi O'Hara. The first 20 minutes, we was like, yes! And then after that, too much. Okay, so... Um, the first thing is, is we talked to Coco Montrese and we found out like she was really sick before she got to call for All Stars so she was very very happy to be there however she does not think that she should have been eliminated first Alaska agreed with her um, she's still a little bit salty, salty with Roxy Andrews but they're still friends um, Adora was really embarrassed about her walking out um, Tati talks about her elimination. She says the first time, yeah, she feels like she should have been in the bottom. She didn't bring it. The second time was bullshit. She admitted that. Um, Ginger goes ahead and says Alyssa was never part of that pack. So she really can't be mad. Like, she never agreed to that. So she can send me home however she want to send me home. Um, Alyssa's first elimination... Alaska is like, y'all watching it on TV. I had to work with this girl. I don't even think we was going to get through it. Like, she was horrible. But the best thing, and I think we all stood up and fucking applauded. And she was like, and girl, that camera dress, that was not a two-on-one look. And Katya was like, ah, bitch, y'all, two-on-one look. What a two-on-one look. You had on a funeral shroud and turned in a little pile cake. I'm like, thank you, Katya, because we was all thinking. And I'm like, bitch, ain't that the put the pot calling the kettle not two in one looks. Okay, stop it. Cut it the fuck out. So Katya called her out on that. I was mad because they had the bullshit battles and nobody had to fucking use them. Um, but that was great. Like I said, I even got in my notes. More Fifi shade. But Ginger says they heard everything when they was behind the mirror. They was back there for like an hour and Alyssa really was. Like she had just got eliminated. It was fresh. Was digging in her arm like she was mad. That was more Fifi shade. Um, they were talking about when Fifi, I mean when Alyssa eliminated Fifi, Alyssa came out and admitted she she eliminated her because of her behavior. She was like, she admitted it. She was like, no, because her behavior was stinking. You know, that's not how you do things. And she eliminated her. 
and then they all talked about the cryptic message. She didn't want to hug nobody for crying, and Tatiana was like, oh, but no, bitch, because you hugged everybody, you hugged me, you came back in the workroom, and you hugged everybody, and you didn't cry. You just didn't want to hug Alyssa. You were salty, and everybody, all the girls was like, yeah, if you was just salty, you was mad at that point, you was mad at that point. So I love that, like, tea was getting spilt, bitch, okay? Tea... They are going to be mad at me when they come to work because it's going to be all kind of brown tea stains and lemon peels and shit all over the floor because tea was fucking spilt everywhere. Um, what else we got? Y'all can ask for one. Oh, Detox and Adore Horse. <laughs> That's all I wrote. I'm like, they talking about they be sharing the trade. They fuck they groupies. They be sending each other groupies and shit. I'm like, oh, y'all wild for that. But I was kind of living for it. I'm like, well shit, that's the perk of being famous. You can get laid every night by whoever the fuck you want to. Oh, you a fan? Come suck my dick. Hey, I ain't judging. Why should it be any difference because they not rock stars? Or because they not straight? Do you, boo? If you can get some groupie love, get you some groupie love. I ain't mad. Um, RuPaul. This was probably the best like scripted joke when he said and now let's talk about global warming let's get into Alaska's meltdown and everybody was just like I was like okay that was okay that's why you got an Emmy that was good that was good um now we also got into detox admitting that when she saved Roxy Andrews she knew it was the wrong decision she knew Alyssa shouldn't have get sent home. Um, Alyssa is basically like, I don't hold grudges. Cause, and Alyssa does seem to be that type of positive mental energy person and try not to hold stuff, which is probably why she had to hit it and perform after her mom died. She seemed like she's the type of person that she don't want no energy that would drag her or make her feel down. Like she likes to be up, happy, and positive. So I... I definitely believe her when she say no, I don't hold grudges because that's negative energy and don't hurt nobody but yourself. I believe her when she say that. Um, girl, where is Alyssa's after party, bitch? Like, you got me subscribed to you and you only gave me two episodes. What the fuck is going on, Alyssa? Okay, so anyway, um, Roxy admits she don't feel, she know for a fact, she don't feel like she deserved to be in the final four. She feel like she should have been went home. She was happy to be there, but she didn't feel like she earned it. Like, we were like, just spilling tea. Just spilling tea, and yes, I just did that. I'm going to have to clean that up. But just tea getting spilled, she was like, I, I don't feel like I deserved it. You know. But there, here we go with some more shade. So this is the moment where we're talking about Roxy. And Roxy is being honest and real and saying, like, you know, she was happy to be there. She did come and do what she accomplished to do, but she don't feel like she should have made it that far in the competition. This is a moment we all want to know. We was waiting on what is y'all going to say about Roxy being the bottom for most of the show and making it to the final four. We were waiting for this. And for Rue to turn that around and make that a motherfucking another dig at Fifi O'Hara kind of lightweight pissed me off. I'm just going to be honest. Because this was, everybody on the reunion show and on a show like this should have gotten their moment. And you took Roxy's moment and made it about Fifi. And I felt some sort of way about that. I really, really did. Especially when she does seem to be the one who has completely changed from her season. That's not mean anymore. That's was being a, a nice, helpful person and really seemed to have changed and grew up some. And for her to full-fledged admit, hey, yeah, I made it to the Final Four and I was happy, but I know, you know, based on the critiques and shit, I shouldn't be here. That in itself was showing she was a completely different person. And for you to take that and be like, well, you earned your redemption. Let me clear that up um, for people that don't understand that. Like, you made it about Fifi. And I really, for real, on everything I love, that was the... The, the breaking point for me with the okay, and you y'all doing enough digs at Fifi now nah, it's fucking ridiculous. That was the point that fucking broke me. Excuse me, I just ate. I was eating during things. She got on my lip. Um, um, they talked about detox killing the runway and detox talked about. It. We kind of touched on that on the season that she had found out her dad was sick. So even though she got on the season and he encouraged her to go, she really wasn't there, and she feels like. 
she showed her ass and she showed what it should have been on the first one. And I tell you what, she just did them motherfucking runways and shit like she did on her season. She'd have been final three. She'd have been final three over Roxy. Like really, she might have been, Jinx might not have made the final three. If Detox was turning the party like she did on All Stars, like I've said this, if y'all watch my videos and you're subscribed to me, you know I was seeing Detox. Like it got to a certain point where I was like, you know what, they sleeping on her and she is fucking killing this shit. So I'm very, very glad that she got what she wanted out of it. And um, I think we all saw too, like I definitely seen a more evolved, a more, I like Detox on her season, don't get me twisted. I liked her on her season. But this, I was like, you know, this bitch is one of the top drag queens i ever seen. She is fucking sickening. Talented. Charisma, uniqueness, nerve, talent. Yes, bitch, that's you. We gonna get into the looks in a minute, because her, her look fucking slayed me. We gonna get into that last. I want to get into the nitty and the gritty first. Um, and then just Katya. I know we all want to see more Katya on this episode, and because it's All Stars, there's not a miscongeniality. But I think we know who the clear people's champ of this shit was fucking Katya. I think we all know that, even though statistically, Detox actually did better than her because Detox was only in the bottom once, and Katya was in the bottom twice, but they won the same amount. So. But she is just so, she like admitted, she was like, you know my fashion wasn't going to be up to par. I just fucking left and I had to turn around and come right back. Her and Ginger were kind of talking about how they just got through right back in it. But, um, like y'all look out for Katya. Like, Katya is going to be one of the, one of the, one of the, 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 the top, top, tippy top superstar queens here real soon. I'm looking for Katya's ass to be in somebody's indie film or somebody to write a film about her being like the Russian whore or I could see her well I don't think she sings I was gonna say I could see her doing like maybe like um Hedwig and the Angry Itch but she can't sing but I can definitely see her doing some upper some upper level shit some shit with some real motherfucking coins you know what I'm saying like I could see her being up there doing that because she's phenomenal. Now, let's get into the looks because this is where I'm going to finish up at. So first of all, I want to start with Alaska. Y'all would not know this about me because why, why would you? I am fucking here for everything fucking hairspray. And fuck what you talking about the motherfucking musical. I'm talking about the original John Waters motherfucking hairspray. That is my shit. I'm talking about Ricky motherfucking Lake. I'm talking about the dude that back in the 90s used to play Elvis and every motherfucking thing is Link. I'm talking about um motherfucking Ruth Brown is motor, motor mouth Maybell. I'm talking about the real hairspray, except no substitutes. Y'all can keep that Broadway shit. It was cool. The movie was cool. Y'all can keep that shit. I'm talking about the, the one and only, the baddest motherfucking bitch that ever did it, Divine. Dual roll. Like, I fucks with hairspray. So when I tell you when Alaska came out in the motherfucking Tracy Turnblad dress with the roaches on it, I was like, bitch, see, this is why I'm okay now that you won. This is why I'm okay because. If you never see Hairspray A, get on that shit. I think it's on Netflix. Get on it. And I ain't talking about the motherfucking remake with John Travolta is the mother. No, bitch. I'm talking about the John Waters original fucking Hairspray. Get on it. But for her, you have to understand, if you don't know it, spoiler alert, it kind of centers around a beauty pageant. And when Tracy Turnblad is crowned, she has on this pink dress with roaches all over it. And it's the exact fucking dress that Alaska had on. So I was living. What I will say is, Alaska, why the fuck did you have that long green ass fucking banana clip in the back of your hair? It wasn't even a banana clip, it was a clock clip. But that shit was driving me crazy because from here, and she came out, and I'm feeling the gloves with the nails, girl. If I wouldn't have already had fingers gloves for my Halloween costume, I'd have popped some motherfucking yellow nails right on top of some black gloves because I'm kind of fucking living for that. But 
I'm a real girl and I have nails all the time, so I usually opt for if I'm going to do cosplay or anything like that. I opt for fingerless gloves so I can still fucking drink and smoke. Truth. But that green clip was just good, giving me the fucking blues. I'm just like, come <laughs> like, if you was if you had to have it in there and your hair was fucking up, they couldn't get you a black one, a pink one, something just that tortoise shell is supposed to mix in with your hair. Something that lime green ass clip was just giving me the blues. Um, detox in this motherfucking. First of all, and I believe that I've said this. I'm not sure if it was on a Drag Race or a Scream Queens review but I live for monochromatic like I love a look that everything is the same color the hair the makeup the, the dress the shoes like so detox and this motherfucking shamrock shake mint green realness fantasy that she was giving me I'm like come on detox come on detox you can't fall off now and it wasn't fluorescent, but it was still very, very detox. And it was just like the wig was right. The outfit was all the same color. The shoes was on point. The lipstick was just a little bit off, but it needed to be because it couldn't be the exact same color or else it would have looked crazy. Like she slayed that shit. She is, she is my top two of the night. Alaska would have had me if she wouldn't have had that goddamn green clip. You lose points for that fucking green clip in the back. I'm sorry, bitch. You are the queen. You got a crown on. We're going to need you to... I'm going to need you to do better than the green fucking claw clip in the back. Sorry about it. But Detox is my top two tonight. Ginger was okay. I didn't care for... Like... I understand it's drag. And even in real life, like... I don't know if you could tell that. Like, this is glitter and this is like metallic fake snake skin print. I like glitter, glisten, and shine. I do. And in drag, of course, the more of that, the better. A lot of times, not always, because as you can see, Detox didn't have none and she my top two of the week. Alaska ain't really had none either. So, for something to just be fucking glittery and shiny is not fucking enough for me. And I feel like. Ginger's look was too dependent on because it was sparkly red and the gloves were sparkly red. I I personally do not like Ginger Minj and blonde hair. I've come to the realization that every time she's worn blonde hair, I really kind of didn't really feel her look. And I just think it's because she's a natural redhead, so her skin tone just lends itself better to red or darker hair. I love when she wears a red. Except for that space shit that wasn't a cute red. But... I know she's her natural hair is dyed blonde, but it's a dirtier blonde. I just don't like her in platinum hair, and I thought the white feather boa was just pointless. Like, bitch, if you was going to do it, get a red one. Get something snazzy. Don't just come out here with uh, motherfucking Fredericks of Hollywood or motherfucking Party City boa. Like, no. Um, Coco. Coco Montrese just don't move me. I've come to the realization of that, too. Like, her makeup does look a lot better, but I'm like... Okay, bitch, you know I'm for the orange hoe, so you wore you you know for being the orange hoe. Well, not no more. That's Donald Trump now. But you know for being the orange hoe, and you will come out in an orange gown, and it wasn't even like nothing spectacular. Bitch, I got a necklace like what you had on. That's some real girl shit. You on? You only did one episode. You got kicked off one episode. I liked you better when you came back for your season with the motherfucker purse. Like, you was doing the Dorito thing and that was cute, but I'm like, just this orange dress, that, that wasn't enough for me. I'm sorry. Um, Adore. Now, keep in mind, and yes, and we did actually talk about this on the show as well. Um, but Adore, I really like Adore's look because for Adore, this was some of the most polished I've ever seen Adore. She just had on a nude dress, like the, the aqua blue makeup, I liked her with a more natural looking hair color, a more ethereal makeup where she just had like the light blue. I've done my eye makeup like that, so I like that in general. But it lends itself very well to her coloring because she has those nice, big, ginormous eyes like I also do, but y'all will never see because I wear sunglasses on camera. And just this nude outfit and like just this, it was still her very riot girl, 90s, like punk rock kind of. It was a good aesthetic. It was a polished adore look. Like, I think if she would have wore that, 
instead of what she wore in the first episode. I don't think Michelle Visage would have read her for filth, and if she did, she was wrong anyway. But it, I don't think she would have read her for this because she looked a lot more polished on this. Um, but I did. I like that look on the door. Tatiana, baby, you going back to looking like what you look like on season two. Because that shit looked kind of busted to me. It looked a little cheap. I understand that the material was actually like a lavender sequence, but from far away it just looked like a lavender spandex, kind of like that skirt you had on that was too short in your season. The real, the real fucking drag race fans know what I'm talking about. And I didn't quite like the way the breasts were painted in the breasts. I felt like you needed a bigger breast plate if you was going to have all of that open. I didn't care for the hair. And because this was already so busy and the material was sequenced and metallic, I did not care for a silver rhinestone pump with a lavender sequence outfit with a split. I, I just didn't care for it. Um, you need to step your pussy up a little bit. You're an all-star now. I'm sorry. That went back to looking like cheap Tati for me. The face was beat for the gods. But I did not care for the outfit. It reminded me of cheap Tati. Roxy Andrews, as much as she nails shit, I did not like her outfit at all. I did not like that tan and red. You look like a Girl Scout. An opposite Girl Scout. Something wasn't right about it. It was giving me Troop Beverly Hills. But not in a good way. Remember, if you watch, if you watch Drag Race and you don't know what True Beverly Hills is, I'm gonna need you to do some motherfucking gay research, bitches. Okay, listen, get it together. But True Beverly Hills was she Shelly Long, and she was a troop leader for like a Girl Scout troop. And of course, you know they got these frumpy tan khaki and green outfits, and she went and got her shit like redesigned, but it was still looking like wilderness girl shit. Y'all ain't ever seen True Beverly Hills. Y'all need to get on that shit for real. Um, but yeah, that's what it was giving me, but not in a good way. And then finally, Katya, the only thing I can say about hers is I get it, but I ain't like it. Like, it was Katya. I get it, but I wasn't feeling it. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up because this is long enough as is. I thought I was going to keep it under 15 minutes. We damn near at 25. So let me know what you thought. You know your girl loves the fucking Kiki and interact with y'all on Drag Race. I also want to remind y'all... Um, that for season six reveal, season six is actually when I stopped reviewing Drag Race, so I'm going to be giving you reviews of Reveal um, on the same day that it airs as well. So we'll still get the kiki about Drag Race together um, going back. So thank you so much for subscribing. I'm gonna go ahead and knock off another breast cancer link up here. Keep in mind that you know when you see this background, it's gonna take a couple days for that link to appear. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. Thank you for riding with me this season. We had a fucking blast. This was the best season of All Stars, or excuse me, of, Ru of All Stars for sure. But RuPaul's Drag Race, and I can't wait for season nine. And I will kick it with y'all again um, on Reveal. I believe that starts November, so I think next week. So I'll see y'all next week, and thank you so much. This is. <laughs>